It's the last day, yes, the final day of the Fly ANA Windsurfing World Cup here in Japan, in Yokosuka, and we have got some exciting racing coming up. I told the sailors first possible start 12 o'clock and then if it's later 10 minutes warning to go to the start. We are now setting the course, we are dealing with some shifting directions, so it's, uh, yeah, I think in, the, in about 5 minutes uh, I will tell you if we're going to start or not, yeah? Alright. To attach the different components of the foil, we need screws and those screws, uh, sometimes they stick out or, you know, they create a little dent. So we basically put tape on top of, top of them to reduce the drag so that the surface is completely even. It's ideal when you have a small film of water on the foil, so when you sand the foil with very sa fine sandpaper, and you pour water on top, the water sticks to the to the foil and that's when it becomes the fastest. As you can notice, most of the foil boards are really straight. They have a straight outline as we call them. That what generates is that your back foot is very far out and gives you a very nice stand, a very easy stand. On the normal boards that we use for slalom, the back foot is further in. We have a rounder outline and that's very convenient for slalom, for speed. But as soon as you go out and you start foiling, your back foot, you feel it is too far out and you're twisted with your body and your back starts hurting. So when you bring the back leg out, then you have a much more parallel stance and it's much more comfortable. So the other thing you can see is the volume. We're supposed to race in very minimum winds. We're trying to reach planing in four knots, five knots. So then the more volume you put to the board, the easier planing you're gonna get. Hydrofoiling seems like we need a lot of equipment. The foil is getting quite big, the sails are getting quite big. But in the end, we only need one or two sails, one board, one foil with maybe two wings for all the conditions. The more tilt you have on your back wing, moving it like that, is the, the more power you will get in light winds. As soon as the wind picks up, you can start taking away that angle, 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 and you can almost get to a parallel front wing to the back wing. That's the most efficient flow of the water and it will go faster, but you will lose power to go upwind or power in lightwind. With this new possibility of changing the backwind angle, you can extend your range a lot. You can go out on four to six knots with one setup or you can sail in 25 to 30 knots with a completely different setup without needing to change much of your foil setup. Just changing the back angle, it will allow you to just go in the water and uh, sail on a very big range of wind. When you start planning and flying on the foil, it's like everything is super quiet. You have uh, no, you have no like shocks or you don't hit the chop. You, you are just in the air flying. And sometimes it's also funny how much light we can go because you know, you're just sailing and you hear people talking on the beach but you are not used to it. So, so it's fun. It's just a, a bit different dimension than, than slalom. You know, slalom is really a lot of shocks to the to the body you really feel every every way of every like everything and on foil it's everything is more quiet and more easy uh, okay so we're here on the last day of the event um it's a few hours uh still left a window to put a race in so i don't know how strong the wind will come in um at the moment my standing is pretty good but i still hope we race because, I mean, that's what we do. That looks light. Nothing. Looks lighter than it looked like. It looks like yesterday, nothing stronger. Not more than five at the moment. Let's try this one, Emilio. Foil racing is 
usually uh, an upwind start. Get ready for red flag up in five, four, three, two, one. But being an upwind start and uh, being more people together on a tight line, it's, it's likely that you can go early. Um, you have to be very, very careful. There are no rules, so you have to be very careful all the time on the last five seconds that nobody's approaching you or trying to run on top of you. Gonzalo Costa-Hobble, Nico Prien there, Stephen Van Brockhoven, all those boys going down right down the port end. The guys at the boat got absolutely done. A really light patch near the boat, hardly uh, getting going. A couple of guys tracking, that looks like Nico Prien on the Neil Pride, already coming this way. Enrico Marotti, they're not going to be first round the mark. It's looking to me, best line at the moment, Thomas Goya, uh, Nicholas Goya and uh, Nicholas Prien are looking good. Thomas Goya, great jive. Kieran Badlow, great jive. Nico Prien in third place. Fourth place, it looks like Matthias Isaac. Then we've got, uh, yep, Sebastian Kirdl, always there or thereabouts, the big German. Kieran Badlow though, caught up a little bit on Thomas Goya here. Are we gonna see an overtaking maneuver? Nico Prien having a much better race here with uh, Matthias Isaac flying at the moment. Like I say, Finian Maynard, FMX race, I'll be happy with this. Nico Prien with a really nice mark round him. Sebastian uh, Kirdl as well, oh, he's had to drop off. There's a little bit of a line there where they've got headed or maybe just not getting the lift. I don't know, maybe that's a tactic. Thomas Goya still out in the lead, going left. Kieran Badlow just behind him. I don't think you're gonna see any of these guys tack unless they're getting rolled. That's Nico Prien in third place as far as I can work out. Uh, Sebastian Kirdl in fourth. Thomas Goya. Nice little jibe there, just staying on the foil, keeping it nice and clean. Kieran Badlow behind him. Very safe jibe from him. Sebastian Kirdle coming through now. Nico Prien has dropped back to fourth place. So Sebastian Kirdle racing really well. Last year's vice foil world champion on the Pilway Tour. Good jibe from Prien. One more jibe to go. Any mistakes here will be massive. Here we go. That's where Kieran Badlow will be watching, but nothing, not even a slight touch. Kirdle on that big starboard. It's a chunky beast, that thing. Neil Pride. JP combo for Prien, a little bit of a moment there. He's got Alexander Cousin behind him. He can probably catch him. Oh, and he has got him. There we go. I was thinking the same thing at the jive from Prien. Didn't look the best. And Alexander Cousin, but there we go. It's another win for Thomas Goya. What a great performance from the Frenchman. Before, last year we were competing, you know, only, only PWS series, but this year some Aero 6 guys that they are taller and maybe only 20 kilo less than us, they were planning in no win, but you know, it's, it's normal. I felt like that uh, we have a big disadvantage in the tech compared to them and that uh, we lose some meters there. Because last year I remember I could, if I see the guy tech second before, I tech and I gain. Here, no chance, man. You cannot go one second be later yes, than green, you will get fucked. Last year you could wait, he takes, you take later and you gain. Now you cannot. Win. But this is personally for me because uh, I'm a bit heavy and really, really light. Like I need to find five, six, seven times to go on the fall and then they pump two, two, three times and they're already on the fall. Uh, I fortunately I did over early, which is a shame as I put a lot of effort, I was pumping a lot and uh, I was sailing good. So we have a, we have a start watch and ideally we have to cross the line at exactly zero. But sometimes you cross the line early and yeah, you do an over early. They should be go like point at you or like out or something, you know? Uh, fuck, fuck. Because, oh, yeah, because I already fucked up first one. Okay, man, we'll do some more races. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. And then you're gonna kill Slalom. Like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm feeling kind of bad when uh, my friend like Enrico or, me, or Nico Prin, you know, they, they do a wrong course or they fall in the jive. I think that in the water we are like in competition, but then out of the water we are a big family. I had the I had the fucking BMG on. I was like, hey, man, I'm just gonna focus on my speed, and then yeah, it worked out. Because before I was always caught up behind somebody, and then I pump and I fuck up my stance and everything. I, and then I was like, I'm just gonna focus on you know going fast, going fast, you know, kind of worked out. Yeah. Keep it up, Enrico. It's it's not problem to fail, you know. When you fail, you learn. But yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the game and I try not to repeat it next time. <laughs> We're within the last few hours of the event and uh, we're still on standby. But uh, right now it doesn't look very windy. We have three eliminations. And yeah, I'm happy that we've you know, raced a bit at least. In Costa Brava we'll race more I guess, so it'll be fun. So I just hope it will next event be a bit more wind because now it's all event is like... Yeah, I think we were really unlucky this year. I, I saw wind there, you know, I was sailing this year, two days before the event, last year, two days before the event. They cannot attract the wind or bring it. If they can, they will do it, you know. They, they know how to stop the rain, you know. They have these rockets for the rain and stop the rain. So maybe in the future they will invent some rockets for the wind. <laughs> We are packing everything because the, the winter thing is gone. Maybe now it's coming some rain. We need to pack everything so fast because uh, we have this competition three days after in Korea. So they want us to, to pack everything yeah, fast. We are traveling with a lot of boards, a lot of sails. I will speak about myself. I am one guy on the tour and I will have six or seven bags going home. So it's kind of, yes, it's stress to, to travel with the bags. Nothing to say about that and, and big thanks to, to the guys that are organizing all this because they are saving us a lot of hustle. I'm pretty happy about my ninth place in Japan. My goal was to be top 10 and I reached that goal so I have nothing to complain about. Okay so we finished the event here in Japan. Um, well, the three races left me in second position. I'm very happy about that, I'm stoked. Um, always feels good, you know, first event of the year in foiling now. And I've shown that in slalom and in foiling, I belong to the, to the top guys in the world. And I'm proud of that. And uh, yeah, it was, a great, it was a great experience here in Japan again. The people are so friendly and um, I really love coming here. Yeah, you feel very, very welcome here. So it's always good to come here and put on the show we can. The PWA in Japan was a tricky one. We were quite unlucky with the wind conditions. In the end, we still managed to get three foil eliminations in. Thanks to foil racing, we can take advantage of every little breeze there is. We will see that there are gonna be more events of foiling in the future. I think that will take a, a bit more protagonism than now. Um, we will be able to race in lighter places, so a lot of locations in the world where a lot of windsurfers are active, we will be able to go and compete there while we were not being able to compete on slalom. So I think it will grow and grow, and um, so I think that when next year we will see a, a bigger foil tour. And yeah, hope we come back next year, maybe with a bit more wind. And until then, now it's time for Korea, we pack up, and we leave in Korea three days, Korea's on. <laughs>